There you go. That's your A, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so on your A, your root note is A, obviously, because it's an A major and it's in a major form. So what I'm going to start with is the major, uh, the major scale, you know, your major natural scale on that. For example, on A, if you were to move down the fretboard and find it on the simplest position, is the way I find it to be the simplest is starting it off on your fifth fret with a sixth string, which is your A note. Now, Joshua, play an A chord and just play it a couple times. Feel free to play it a couple times. Strum it, okay? Now, when you start incorporating these scales, remember, it's like math. It doesn't matter in what order the notes are played in, they're always going to combine with this. So the end factor is going to be the same thing. If you go ascending, descending, or if you combine them up or down. Just to give an example, if you keep going like that. That's ascending and descending order in just one octave. Now today, hopefully, I will cover two or, two or maybe even three octaves of each scale. If not, then we're going to stick with one or two, you know, depending on what, how much we can squeeze in at an hour of playing. Um, even Frank can join in with this guitar right there, too. Now, in, in music, always remember it's important two things. It's number one is you got to respect the key that you're playing in if you're playing with somebody else. And number two is you got to respect the timing that you're playing in. You, know, you can't play out of time, you can't play out of tune. Um, what, what was that saying that the guy said the other day? It was, uh, life's too short to be playing out of tune. You know? <laughs> Tuning is not just the town of China. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, and it's true when you're, when you're playing, and you can hear it sometimes when you hear, for example, if you were to do your A, just like that, strum it again, and I'll do a G. You know, you can right away be like, what was that? You know, yeah, right, right, yeah, exactly. You right away, your ear right away recognizes that it's not in key. You don't need to have a trained ear to know that it sounds bad. You know, most most person off the street can tell you that didn't sound right right away. What you do need to have a good ear for is just to recognize what key it's in and finding that key. Okay. Once you find the key, then we can start building this scale on that. Um, to put it a little more into perspective, the major scale. Um, well, first of all, on the guitar, of course, each fret as you move one fret is considered a half step. Whole step is considered to move two frets. I don't know if you knew this. You heard that? Two frets. Two frets is a whole step. One fret is a half step. So let's say from zero fret or open to the first fret, that would be half step. If you were to go to the second step, to the second fret, excuse me, that would be a full step. Now, uh, every uh, every string, and if you want to think of it that way, every string. You can find your major scale, your minor scale, or any scale on that because you have two octaves, or one and a half in the case of acoustics. <laughs> but uh, your octave, all it is, is of course the same note. Let's say you're doing C. Once you pass your seven notes, which is there's only seven, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Once you pass that again, you reach that same note again, that's your octave. Uh, I like to use a little trick called the skip and skip, especially on the sixth and fifth strings. That means is if you you find a note, let's say the third fret of the sixth string. If you skip a string and you skip a fret, then you're going to find the same note again. So it's called the skip and skip. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of, I've never heard of that. So do do that again. What was that again? You would find. Let's say we're doing in G, which is your third fret of the sixth string, right? You skip a string, so you go to your fourth string. Skip your fifth, go to your fourth. Right there on the same fret, you would skip a fret. So skip your fourth fret, go to the fifth, and you're at the octave. You know, and it works on the sixth and fifth strings. You could always use that. Skip and skip, and you'll always find the octave. Okay. And now, when you get when you get to after the the fourth string and on, then the rule changes because of the tuning of the B string and the E string. Of course, the only thing that will change is that you're adding now one more fret. So it's skip and skip skip. <laughs> so you're doing your, let's say you're doing it in G, remaining on the G with the next octave. Now you would skip your string and then skip two frets on the second. Now the reason that I like to point those out is because when you're doing, when you're doing your, your scales in one octave, you're going to start on your, well in this case, in the scales we're doing today, the major and the minor, you're going to start on that octave and you're going to end 
so first thing to identify is where the octave is. So let's say, let's say we're doing G again. I'm, I'm going to use G for various examples, which is the third fret of the sixth fret. You skip a string, you skip a fret, you're on the fifth fret of the, third, of the fourth string. Now your major scale needs to start here and end here, where you're at. Okay? So, all you're doing is plugging in the notes. And the major scale always sounds like what most people know commonly as the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, To, La, Ti, Do. Right? That's what the major scale should sound like on every note. Of course, it's not going to always be Do, Re, Mi, because Do is uh, translated to C, and then uh, D is Re, and you know, so on and so forth. But, um, yeah, close. Throw that way. One more. Yeah, move your, your third finger to this position. Okay. Okay. Right there. I made it perfect. Now, like I said, when we started, is there's no, no set rule as to what the pattern needs to be when you're doing the scale. It doesn't say, well, you always have to do it up, or you always have to do it down. Oh, by the way, when I, when I speak about ascending and descending, it's by audio, not by hand position. So if I'm doing this, and the notes are going up, I'm ascending. When I'm doing this, it sounds like I'm going down, I'm descending. So likewise, when you're strumming your chord, this is ascending, this is descending. Because you're going from high note to low note. Okay. So when we're when we're uh, when we're doing on the, on the scale on the on these examples that we're doing today, the major and the minor, you always want to make sure that you're landing to start either on this octave or this one. So if you're doing ascending, you would start on the first octave. The example is in G, and I'll, I'll walk down the frets right now. We reach the other G again. Like when we're coming down, we're starting in G, and we're ending in G again, which is a skip and skip on that, okay? Now, to kind of go over the position, um, I don't know how you guys are doing on memory. I know you're probably good at this, <laughs> but we're, we're kind of out there in age already. How it says, do, re, mi, fa, to, la, ti, do, you're actually repeating two notes, which is the root notes, right? So it's eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The eighth note, that's what's called octave. It comes from octava or eight in Latin, which is eight notes from separation on that. Not frets, but actual notes. Okay? Now, if we were to let's work on the on the major scale first of all on every single string, and then we'll compare them to what it sounds like when you're doing it on the actual fret, fretboard with besides open. So, Joshua, what note is your fifth string open when you're tuning it? on the A string for now, it's going to be the fifth string on A. Um, I'm going to go by frets and I'm going to go ahead and tell you the notes that it is. So slowly, if you guys want to strum with me, we're doing the A string open first. Okay. Just open, not the chord, just the A string. Just the A string. The next one, there you go. Just open. There you go. So it's that one, and then it's going to be second fret of the A string. A string. On the next one. The next one. There you go. On the next one. Further up. On that one. Like this right here. This is your open A. And you go to this. Which is your second fret, which is right here. Just that. You don't have to do the chord. It's just we're doing string by string. So right there's just that string. Okay? And we're going to go fret by fret. So we start at open. On the second fret. And then we go to the fourth fret. Fourth. anywhere on the fretboard. And that's anywhere on the fretboard. 
Now you can combine them if you want to start in, in C, which is the third fret of the fifth string, and you want to get on the same string to the next octave. So your number three, all you got to do is add 12 frets. So in your head, 12 plus 3 is 15. So you would go from 3 to 15 in order to get your octave again on that. Or the skip and skip. It's the exact same thing. So you got that, you got that applied on that. Okay, so the major scale, again, on each string is always going to be the same. The pattern, the finger movement is always the same. It's always easier on guitar and more practical. Uh, to memorize the finger position or the finger movements that you're doing as opposed to memorizing each single note of every single scale because you know the, for example the piano's layout is easier in my opinion because you have whites and blacks on the top right guitar they have no colors or anything it's just all of them are the same so you kind of have to differentiate in your mind but the cool thing about guitar is that every single finger movement that you do that pattern wherever you started at is going to be the same pattern for that note it's just going to change the note Put it into perspective. If I start the major scale in G, same finger movement, but I started in A, in D, it's the exact same finger movement to whatever, or whatever part. And that's that's the advantage of the guitar, is that you're able to find pretty much all the scales without having to move the finger position. So if you memorize your position, you got all the scales down for that for that mode or whatever scale that you. Let's try it again on uh, the full string scale. I want to just kind of just drill it in to memorize it. And I'm going to do it this time in the example of the sixth string. But this time I'm going to show the notes that are in. Okay? So sixth string open is E. Second fret on the sixth string is F sharp. Fourth string is G sharp. Fifth string is A. Seventh fret is uh, B. And then you would go, uh, I lost my tune of thought which is a C sharp, excuse me, and then you go to D sharp, which is your 11th fret, and then you're going to end up again at E, where you started. Now, when you're, when you're practicing scales, I always think that it's very important to do it with a metronome in the back, just so you can kind of build your speed, build, uh, you know, get familiar with the scale first at your own speed, and then just keep going, you know, faster and faster. Now, for example purposes, I'm going to go ahead and set up metronome, and I'm going to set it at, at, at 80 beats per minute. So we can do it kind of slow, try to get it all together at the same time, and I'll go over the frets again. So if you guys want to kind of look at your guitar, the major scale on each string again is compromised by open string, zero fret, second fret, fourth fret, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh. Zero, two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, twelve. Okay. Okay, so let's try to play the scale. Let's do it on the sixth string, and what this will be your E major scale. So just I'll play it once so you can hear it. Oh, it's going to sound on top of the metronome. Okay, so again, it's 0, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, 12. Kind of confusing a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll work on it some more. We'll it gets a little confusing, but once, once you get it down, then, then you'll kind of know where it's at. Okay, you guys want to try it out? Yeah. Let's do it on the count of four. I'll let the metronome run for one bar and then we'll do it on the on the second bar. On the second bar. Okay, I'll let it run another bar. We'll try it on the fifth string this time. Two, three, four.
that's your major scale in one octave on the guitar. Now keep in mind your guitar, it's not this mystical, endless instrument that has, you know, wizardry on it or anything. You know, it's pretty simple. You mean I was lied to, you say? Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you were lied to. That wizard was wrong. You were lied to by Jimi Hendrix. Well, now, you know, the way it's set up is that everything repeats itself. Music only has seven notes and five sharps or five flats. You know, uh, time kicks in a lot. You know, it's a big... It's a big uh, Plus, that you, you combine the notes in different timings. That way, your pretty much combinations are endless. If it wasn't endless, then by now we'd probably be running out of music to compose. You know, but there's just so many infinite ways you can com you can combine one single theme. For example, just the octaves. Then G, how we're doing it right now? I can combine them in this form. Or I can do two and one. Or I can do one and two. Pretty much, you can combine them in any way you want. You're never gonna, you're never gonna run out of ways of, of, of combining them. You're never gonna run out of ways of doing two notes like that, even if it's the same note. Now, imagine adding eight notes to the scale. How many possible ways can you combine that? How many time uh, signatures, or how many times can you strum one before the other one? It's endless. You know, it's endless. You can stay on one note if you want to for a whole bar. Two, three, four. possibilities of having. That's the cool thing, that's the thing that I always thought was really cool about music is that, you know, I can have an idea and it'll, it can sound like somebody else's idea, but at the same time it's completely different. It can sound the same, but I'm doing it here. Hence it's not the same song anymore or the same composition. It's already completely different. Okay, getting back to the scale. We already worked on that. If you were to want to continue with your major scale, after the 12th fret, it will be the exact same pattern as the pattern we just did starting from fret number zero. Keep in mind, this is your octave, so if you kind of want to put it into perspective that the 12th fret is fret number zero again, you can, because that's the way the guitar is laid out if you have inlays. For example, you would have, on mostly, because this one has an inlay on the first, but most guitars, you won't get your inlay onto the third fret. So it's zero, one, two, third fret is the first inlay. Likewise, when you get to the 12th fret, zero, one, two, third fret will be your first inlay. So that's how you would start doing your major scale again. So to continue it, just so you can hear it. Right, right now. That's why we keep going. You know, it's the same pattern that we did from 0 to 12, which just completely repeats it, repeats itself here. Which the big advantage is, if I'm playing uh, a rhythmic section, and let's say I'm doing an A, an A major. And you guys want to just play the A major, uh, major scale, from from the higher octave, you don't have to just stick to this one and kind of start where I'm at. Let's start on the high octave already. And yeah, doing the A. Now, um, I'm gonna, I want to I wanna try it like that. Let's uh, let's do the major scale. What I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strum it the full two bars so you can get from one octave to the other one. And then I'm going to go to the minor chord for the next chord. I mean the major chord, excuse me. So I'm going to do E major. I want you guys to do the scale again on that. And then once you get to the 12th fret, then jump to your A. I'm going to do your A major now. And then I'm going to go to D, of course. And we'll, we'll do three. And then we'll see if we, we can do all, all, all four, all six strings. But we'll do three right now, just the major scale. Now. The cool, cool thing is here is you guys are going to do it ascending. Uh, who wants to be a volunteer and do it descending? Ooh. I'll do descending. You want to do descending? Yeah, okay, so we got, we got the brave man, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that way you can see that it doesn't matter what order it's played in or what combination you're doing, it's going to match. You see, I'm just going to be playing the chord, you're going to be doing descending, and you're going to be doing ascending, right? Cool. All right. Let's try this again. I'm going to let it run one bar, and we're going to try it in E, E major. Two.
G, right? Or if you don't want to be doing just one string, why limit yourself when you have other, other strings to do it? So now Sam and Fine is where that major skill comes into play in, uh, in the pattern, not just on one each single string. Now, the, the way that I like to memorize these patterns is I'll divide them either in two or three parts. It's easier than trying to just memorize the whole thing in one single city. So we're gonna do we're gonna do the major scale by three parts. Part number one, the first two notes of the major scale. First two notes, let's say we're starting on the sixth string and we're gonna keep going on G. So your first your G note is your third fret, right? The way I've memorized it, and I think it's similar to uh, what most people teach to it, is you start with your middle finger on the major position. Reason being because you're gonna go back to your index finger later. So we're using our middle finger on the third fret for the G, and then we're gonna be using our pinky for the A, which is the fifth fret. And those are the first two notes of the major scale in G. If you were to find uh, the octave on that, all you have to do is skip and skip. Skip a string, skip a fret. Okay, so. On that one. That's your first first position. It's only three positions that we're doing. Number one is those two notes. Middle, pinky, middle, pinky, middle, pinky. Number two. We're gonna go to the next string, which is your fifth string, and we're gonna start on the second fret, which is your B, and then you're gonna do with your middle finger your third fret, which is your C, and with your pinky, you're gonna be doing your fifth fret, which is your D. So We did two positions. We did two notes, I mean. That's all. Now we incorporate the second part. Right? Now the third part and then final part of the of, uh, first octave of the major scale would be the same thing. You start your second fret of the fourth string, which is your E, and then we do fourth fret with your ring finger. Then fifth fret with your pinky. So this one is. Now if you start throwing all three of them together, of course, then you start getting your full scale because you're starting from one G and ending on the other G. So we go. Ascending or descending, really the order doesn't matter. Well, I kind of wanted to touch on triads too, but we'll do that some other time because we still got to go with the minor. <laughs> Alright, so the major scale on that one, again, sixth string, it's just uh, middle, pinky. Fifth string, index, middle, pinky. Fourth string, Index, ring, pinky. Middle, pinky, index, middle, pinky, index, ring, pinky. And that's the position of your scale. Now, wherever you put it, it's going to be the major scale. Just and then that's the pattern for all major scales, right? Yeah, that's the, that's the pattern for all major if scales. You, starting on the, on the sixth string? Starting on the sixth and the fifth. Sixth and fifth, okay. Uh -huh, because once you get to the fourth, then you get, once you get that B string, all you got to do is you got to move your, your, your pattern one fret. One fret off. That's all you gotta do. So let's say you're starting on the fourth. And then you just move one fret up for the last part. And that's just for that last, for the last, um, uh -huh. last part. For the last part. Or if you wanna do it on the, if you wanna start it on your, on your third string, then once you get, the, it's gonna be middle, pinky, and then right away you're gonna have to move one fret again, and then do the same position. That's, that's how you start kind of putting your, your uh, positions into place and combining them. Because right now what I'm doing is I'm going to do just one octave of the major skip, which is from, from one skip to the next, from the skip and skip. Okay, now if you want to get to, to, to go on, then find your next skip and skip. And then just connect your scale in between those two. Up and down. 
For example, the one that I use, for example, to uh, connect the dots like that and, and put it onto perspective how it walks around through the, through the octaves <coughs> is that E major scale, the full scale. Reason being because, of course, we're starting over here on your open E and we're ending on this E. If I could still get another E over here, then I'd probably do another, but, you know. That one, just, the example, it sounds the same. I'm just cruising through four E's. One, two, three, four. section we have to be respecting the fact that it's a major scale. You're not going to be playing a... Uh... Of course there's always exceptions to rules. Sure, music, sure. But, you but, might but, yeah, but you're not going to be playing something else. You, know, you, you can do maybe a seventh right in front of the bar to you know, go back to your major. But uh, for the most part then you have to respect the fact that if it's a major, it's a major scale. If it's a minor, it's a minor scale. If it's a seventh uh, set of pattern, blah blah blah. You always have to make sure that you're respecting that rule in music. Really, there's very few rules in music. Kind of everything is, is, is no, no rules as when it comes to writing. But these scales and patterns and things like that are, are, are uh, things that have already been tried and true. You know, they work. They sound good. They combine with each other. You know, and it doesn't mean that you always have to play them like that. It just means that if you play them, then they're going to sound good regardless of how you do That's the advantage of a lot of jazz musicians, for example. You see him playing and you see him improvising for 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. And you're like, wow, how'd they do all that? Mastery of the scales. That's all they're doing. They know the progression. Let's say we're doing an old rock and roll progression. And then they know, okay, well, it's in the key of G. I have a G major scale I can, I can play with. And then you start getting into the modes, you know, and, and different variations of that. And they just go on forever because what we just say? It's infinite ways you can combine them. So I can improvise. I can go and just stay there. And I just stay there again. You know, or I can just do a quick all of them. Keep going. And it sounds like something different. Even though I'm doing the same finger movements, it's gonna sound like something different every time. So it's important to have them down. You know, to have your finger movements down to know what your positions are, to know where your movements are. It's not really that important when you're playing the scale to initially memorize all the notes you're playing, because then you can sit there all day just trying to remember the notes you're playing instead of trying to remember the pattern. You know, and, and that's one thing that gets a lot of people discouraged from playing, is that they start learning theory, but they don't apply it right away to the guitar, you know? So it's like, oh, when am I gonna start playing? That's why I like to teach both things. Yeah. Is you start playing and you start plugging in your head what you're playing. This is what I'm doing, this is why I'm doing it, and this is what I have to do if he's doing a major. This is what I have to do if he's doing a minor. So on. So. Okay. Now, Joshua, you're going to play the guitars today. You're going to be giving us the solid B. Okay? Because I helped you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you regret helping me out, don't you? <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> Alrighty. We're going to be doing a G chord. Your G major, remember your G chord, this one? Your G. Your G. We're going to be doing that, and you're going to strum along with me. Or maybe a little slower. Well, I'll put the metronome on, so a little slower. Like that. What, what I want you guys to kind of start experimenting with, and do it freely, is both both position, both uh, the pattern and the single string pattern on G. So your G string is your third string, so you guys can kind of mix and match. And it'll sound something like this. Keep on, keep on.
we're going to do the A now, and you guys can do the same thing on the A string. Go to our position and start it on your fifth fret of the sixth string, same major. All right, you ready, Joshua? Okay. Let's do this. One, two, three, four. sounds like it's supposed to be there, regardless of what pattern you're using, how fast you're playing it, if you're pulling off, if you're hammering on, if you're bending, as long as you don't stay on the bend, then you change the note, of course. Um, but then, if you respect that scale, then you're good to go with any major chord. Now, a lot of music, a lot of popular westernized music, or you know, a, lot of, a lot of American pop, uh, a lot of Mexican music, you know, most of the stuff that we hear on this side of the world is based a lot on the major scale. A lot of stuff that I just like metal, it's based a lot of minors, as you know, minors and, and Phrygian modes and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, for example, if very popular songs like uh, Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine, it's all based on a major scale. It's all based on the major D scale. Because the chord progression is D, C, G, D. So it's all based on that. So what Slash is doing is just breaking up those chords. Giving each accent at the turn of the at the turn of the, the chord. Mm -hmm. So if they start on D, that's where it starts. When they go to C, it kind of just stays on that E. When they go to G, it just stays on that G. And then back at the D. See? And it's a song that, man, I don't know how long has that song been out? 20 years almost? Yeah, a long time. And it's still popular and it still sounds nice and people don't get bored of it. Why? Because it's a very nice composition. Is it difficult? Not at all. It's just well made. Is it complex? Is it fast? Not at all. It's actually pretty slow. It's just combining the major scale in different ways and different modes. That's all, that's all he's doing. Once you get to see that, and, and when I learned that growing up, you know, I kind of felt cheated. Because I, I would say, I, man, I all these guys that I looked up to, the, the, all they're doing is just these scales and, and these, these chords. And, you know. Then I started seeing other guys, and I was like, oh, okay, these guys are good. <laughs> but a lot of music back in the day that I used to hear, uh, listen to growing up, in excess, and uh, you know, even 80s stuff, like Tears for Fears and stuff like that. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Kind of, well, yeah. <laughs> we're kind of older than that. Uh, you know, they were using very simple stuff, very simple uh, patterns, very simple positions that they would use uh, in order to get that uh, those melody lines uh, with the voice and everything. Because it's a language, music is a language, so if I'm doing a D major, it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, you're going to have to respect the fact that it's a D major and you're going to have to play it, I mean a G, excuse me, a G major scale to, on top of that or any mode that is in the major, major positions with that scale, with the G on that one. Okay, um, before we get into a little bit of a Q&A, in case you guys have any questions like that, I want to uh, just show you the finger pattern for the minor scale, so you can hear the difference on that. Now, the minor scale became very popular, I think, in guitar playing when blues started coming out. Uh, the, you know, the pentatonic forms and everything like that, most of it is, is based on minor, minor stuff. For example, when you do, when people when are doing the classic... <laughs> classic licks like that, it's all based on a minor scale. So all the, all the guitarists are doing as leads, of course in a very beautiful professional way, is they're, they're mixing and matching those minor scales. Now since we said at the beginning that everything's a variation of the major scale, the minor scale is going to be very, very similar. Number one, number one similarity is that they start and end in the root note. We're going to be doing one octave. Now the thing that varies is the positions. Let's do this in G, just to keep a, keep a G again. We're going to be doing a G note. And then we're going to be doing an A, just like when we were doing the major. Now, instead of going 
to the B, we're going to be doing a B flat or A sharp. So you can either do it here, or the way I do it is just the note next to the A. Okay, so that's your first part. Remember, it's three strings, three parts to it, just like we do on the major. We're doing on the next string, which is the fifth string, we're going to do the exact same movement. And then on the fourth string, we're just going to be doing C and D. I mean, uh, excuse me, I said C and D. We're just going to be doing F and G. It's not getting all confused after talking for a while. <laughs> so as a uh, difference from the major, as far as the finger movement is, you're doing three notes on the first two strings, and then two notes in the end. On the major, it's backwards. You're doing two notes in the beginning, and three notes on every other string. So again, the minor, I think it's, it's simpler, but it's a variation of the major. It's index, ring, pinky. Same thing on the next, index, ring, pinky, and index, ring. Now, ascending or descending, again, it doesn't matter the order that you use, the speed that you use, as long as you're playing at the same rhythm time as the rhythm section, you should be able to combine them in any way. Okay? Do you know how to do a G minor? Can you do this one? With the minor? Uh huh? No, you can't work. Yeah, I didn't think so. It's kind of hard. <laughs> Okay, well, we can do it like no, that. I guess, no, this one. Yeah, we can do it. If you do it like here, you can put your finger over these two. These two? Uh huh. But on this, on this frame, on the third frame. Right there. I'll read this one too. I'll read this one. Just like that. So put your finger flat. This one. Just your finger flat. Just your finger flat. Let's try it on a, on a G major, on a G minor position. Okay, me and Joshua are going to be strumming the G minor. You guys just kind of experiment with that position. If you want to kind of try to translate it to the next octave, it's the exact same principle as we did with the major. Just move the third one. Just move exactly. Move the move the last last string uh, up one fret. Part of the two. All right, you ready, Joshua? Let's do it on the count of three. One, one on the count of four. With the minor. Remember the right now, are you doing just the three notes right here? Right there. And you're just gonna, gonna just gonna hit those three notes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You're gonna hit it with those three notes. Okay? Not only guitar, just those three. There you go. One and two and three and four and Sound. We'll do a major chord, do a minor chord, oh, it's 
kind of sad. And, and most most songs in popular music that are depressing are, you know, uh, based on a minor scale. Uh, if you were to do uh, like the Kryptonite song, that very popular song, uh, starts in your B minor. Sad, happy. in scales, you do your, your minor based because you're in the key of B minor. So you do minor based scale. Let's say you B minor over here. Which is what the solo is based on. Based on the minor chord, that's the key on. So we're respecting the fact that it's in the key of B minor. So we're doing what? A minor scale, minor progression. If we do, if we were to be doing like the Guns N' Roses song, on um, that one, for example, Sweet Child of Mine, well, let's try, let's try a little crazy experiment here. I'll play the rhythm section, and you guys can just play the major scale for D on either the string or your D note on the pattern, which is on the sixth string, on the tenth fret, on the fifth string, on the fifth fret. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go through the pattern. I'm gonna go through all the chords, the whole progression, and you're gonna just make up whatever you want, and I guarantee you, it's gonna sound like your slash. <laughs> Guaranteed. <The> Guaranteed. <laughs> so I got all my money back. I don't sound like Smash at all. <laughs> all right, I'm done. Count four. One and two. scale to it and uh, another thing is that since it is in the key of D major and I'm doing the chords that I'm doing in my progression is this D, C, G and D again. D, C, G those notes are included in your scale anyway you know so that's why they sound very very nice combined in any order you know, kept ascending, descending, mixed up however type signature you know it's gonna sound good it's gonna mix okay so keep in mind that guys Hopefully, you know, it, it's, it put, a little, put a little perspective on it. Um, some things you might have already known, some things you might have not known. Uh, just use them. Use them to your advantage. Use them when you're playing music. Remember, there's no rules. There's just trying true patterns that work and sound good. Okay, Squeeze on the guitars.